Welcome to Am I Right? Well, Debbie, this week we got a little bit of a surprise out of the UAW and Bob King after years of saying right to work was too divisive an issue to um, bring up in Michigan. They've thrown it on the table with a ballot drive to ban right to work legislation. Actually, Nolan, I think it was put on the table by the working men and women of this state who have been watching <laughs> yes, like they get a the legislation <laughs> that's been going through the, both of the houses and very concerned about the number of things that were happening to them and putting into the Constitution their right to organize. That's what you're witnessing. Well, they have the right to organize, and they would have the right to organize no matter what the legislature did. But, but the, the, the really um, sleazy part of this is that they had Governor Rick Snyder um, Chase Bolger in the House, Randy Richard in the Senate, committed to keeping right to work off the table. The business group said, we don't want to take up that issue. They had the, the, the commitment from the Republicans not to let this thing blow up, and then Bob King blows it up, either as a way to get um, Democratic vote turnout in the fall or to protect public you know, sector I, unions, I, I, which is all this bill is we're about. We're going to have to move on very quickly, but I want to make two points. This mm -hmm. is not Bob King. This is really the working men and women of this state. And the fact of the matter is, Brian Dickerson wrote a very good column this week. These men and women are afraid what was happening to their everyday lives and that people were trying to take away collective bargaining. The governor never said, I won't sign the bill if it gets to their desk. They're scared. It was never going to get to his desk. The and this isn't and about collective it. bargaining. It's about pr protecting the public sector's union's grip on our local communities and our tax dollars. But let's get Dick started, Debbie. Who you think's Mayor it, Dave Alan. Bing wants $150 million from Governor Rick Snyder. Am I right that the city won't get a thing from the state without a credible deficit reduction plan? Well, I, th I think you're dead right. And if you talk to the state legislatures, they believe, uh, both in the city and out, that people want to help Detroit, that everybody mm -hmm. knows that. that if Detroit fails, the state's in trouble, mm -hmm. so that everybody's vested in a healthy Detroit. But that Detroit's got to have a plan, and that they're going to be strings tied to dollars that come. Even the state legislatures themselves from Detroit say that. So I think it, it, it was a beginning. The fact of the matter is it appears that both the governor and the mayor have an agreement that there should not be an emergency fin financial manager. I'm not that sure that about that. I think the I, governor I think said he doesn't want, want one, one. Okay. but he hasn't committed not to appoint one. And I think we're probably moving in the direction of a consent decree. Well, we've been moving in that direction since October. I don't understand the difficulty the mayor and city council are having coming together in the face of this crisis. We're now beginning of March. By the end of April, everyone seems to agree there will be no cash. And the governor said, you, you all sit down, council and mayor, you all sit down, bring me a plan. What do you want to do to solve this? And I'll work with you. He said, I will be your partner. And instead of presenting with a plan, Dave Bing hits him today with a request for $150 million to bridge their cash flow problems. I asked the governor last week, would there be a cash infusion for Detroit? He said, not without a plan for solving this thing. Well, nobody's going to give it to him without a, a plan. And I think he knows it, and he's got to deliver, and the D-Day is quickly arriving. But so it's, that's been true since October, and they haven't well, been able to do it. And you wonder why they are, I mean, it doesn't seem like the mayor and the council are having like productive talks. I think that they've made significant movement, and we're going to have to move on. But if this was simple, it would have been done. We got to, it's got to get done. There's no question. The mayor needs to understand. He's gonna. He's got to give him a plan. And I think the next couple of weeks we're going to see what happens. That's all. I got to be positive. No, I have some of the same frustrations you share. On the same day the mayor gave a speech, we learned that the city is still having trouble spending federal grant money. $20 million for home demolitions in danger of being lost because the city hasn't put it to use. Am I right that this isn't good for the city either? Well, you're absolutely right. And I think it speaks to the last question of why Governor Rick Snyder is not so eager to write a, a $150 million check with no assurances that the money won't disappear in the same way this federal money is disappearing. I mean, it's been about a year ago, the federal government sent sent bureaucrats into Detroit to help them figure out how to spend this grant money. This isn't a, a problem that just cropped up. This has been a chronic problem with the city having to send money back to the federal government because they can't spend it on time or in the way the federal government wants. In this case, it was money to tear down houses. There was also an $11 million program to um, help the jobless that they apparently can't account for. I, I wonder what happened to those federal officials who were here trying to help? Well, I think I, I've 
actually asked a lot of questions about this this mm -hmm. week, and I do believe that they are trying to get a handle on the, the city needs to establish tracking procedures. It needs to, there's a whole lot of things that have to happen. The other thing that I found reassuring as I was asking questions is that the city understands they shouldn't be doing all this, but they need to decide what the core services are that they need to be providing, mm -hmm. fire service, et cetera. I, I got disturbed when I heard it about Head Start because yes, the, uh, our, our, our children, our, th that's feeding our kids who need mm -hmm. it. But then Washtenaw County just did the same thing. And, and I watched, was very upset when I heard this was happening in Washtenaw County. The county commission has said that's not the business we should be in. So they've gone out of the business and serve, serve, uh, 501c3s, probably they're, they're looking at which group is going to do it, who are better able and have the talent and the skills to administer those dollars are going to look at taking over the program. City's looking apparently at doing that same thing. Where, where is the right place for these programs to be administered? Going too slow? You and I get frustrated? I was reassured to hear the right questions. But, it, but it's beyond that, Debbie. I mean, it, it suggests a, that they still have severe management problems well, at City okay, Hall. Wait. If we've got agencies that are unable to spend this money for the federal government to solve problems that are supposed to be priorities, like tearing down homes, uh, you've got a structural problem that City Hall that has to be addressed along with the concessions of the contracts. You get the feeling Bing thinks it's enough to just get concessions from employees. He's got management problems he's got to solve before he can expect any help from anywhere, I think. I, I would only say to you, uh, you're exactly right in everything that you said, except that I know that he knows he has management problems. Well, knowing you and have problems and fixing it, two different things. We, we just, Debbie, gas prices seem to be getting higher by the day and are now perilously close to $4 a gallon. Am I right that the politicians should stop playing the blame game and figure out how to bring them down and quickly. No, and you know I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think people are tired of finger pointing. And quite frankly, we have slowly but surely been seeing a recovery in the economy. Today, more good news. Another 200 plus thousand jobs have been added to the economy. Unemployment staying stable. These high gasoline prices can shake consumer confidence and Absolutely. send this economy spiraling back down. We think we're going to have a good year for the autos. People are are predicting and projecting increased auto sales. These gasoline prices go up, it could shake the whole and, economy again. And the, we need to start looking at what policies would actually have an impact. You had the president over the last week blaming the oil company profits again and wanting to hit them with a tax and take away tax breaks. That's not going to bring down gas prices. You also have folks out there now blaming speculators. There are very specific reasons here. Some we can control and some we can't. The ones we can control include doing something about um, the monetary policy. These extremely low interest rates are driving up commodity prices. It's why you're seeing food go up as well. And it, you know, gasoline, uh, oil is a commodity. And as long as we hold to this, these artificially low interest rates, you're going to see prices for commodities creep up. We also have to do something about the, the restrictions that this administration has replaced has placed on exploration. It's good for a number of reasons, including the pipeline for Canada, by the way, but it's good for a number of but reasons. The president has made it clear, and they're looking at mm -hmm. new uh, options in terms of getting that pipeline. The president has been supporting drilling in many different places. Not have, on federal at, land, at, absolutely at, not. At oil, oil addressing the oil companies is part of it, Nolan. We've got to stop finger pointing and work together. Yours isn't as simple in answering either. Nolan, tensions continue to build in the Middle East, with Israel and Iran seemingly headed for a showdown, which scares the blank out of me, and Syria ready to explode. Am I right, the president's right, to warn Republican presidential candidates not to beat the drums of war for political gain? Well, I, you know, and I thought what the president was, was saying last week was all about political game. I, and and I, I will equate it to what the Bush administration did at the start of the Iraq war, where they tried to mute criticism by saying, hey, we got to support the troops, as if, so, so, as if you couldn't oppose the war and still support the troops. I thought that was despicable. I thought this idea of saying, well, I've got responsibility for fighting the war, so, you know, don't criticize me. I think there's room to criticize the way this president has handled Iran leading up to this. And also there's room to criticize his Israel policy where he created ambivalence about U.S. support for Israel and emboldened its industry, enemies in the Middle East. Very dangerous thing to do. No, and I think that the president was very clear this week in, in, in the prime minister's visit to this country of 
this country's support for Israel. But I think that we are playing very dangerous games, and I, for one, am scared to death what might happen in these next few months between uh, weeks. Is, uh, weeks. Uh, so I just hope that all politicians will not play games and leave this in the hands of people that know what they are doing. Well, I hope we have people who know what we're doing. I'm a, I, you know, all of a sudden you have the president saying, I've got Israel's back. Meanwhile, over the last three years, he's gone all over the world in front of Arab audiences and scolded and lectured Israel. He has not been no, to I... Israel. He's been to all the countries in the vicinity. You know, I think Israel has good reason to doubt this president's no, commitment. I... We have to go to a break, but I'm going to tell you two things. I think the president made it very clear that this country is strongly su supporting Israel and seeking peace is not not supporting Israel. Bob Vicano joins us when we return with Am I Right?